false stack or hopefully won't mix that with anything else. Is that going to get paid May to come back? Sure. I don't know. I just don't know. I think Peyton's coming back. But the longer it takes, there's stories coming out that the Broncos really like this Osweiler kid. She's got 19 million reasons to come back. Well, it's not just the money, though. Is it? It's definitely not just the money. How many yachts can he water ski behind? It's it's just knowing. You don't think Peyton Manning talks to the all-time greats, including the ultimate boss that's there right now? You don't think he talks to some of these people, including his dad, even, about when I retire? That's, that's it. That's it. That you miss the guys in the locker room. You miss the game days. Favre come, comes on, you know, game day morning every so often. And he'll say he doesn't miss the preparation. And, and, and this year he said he doesn't miss sitting in the hotel room on the road before the game, thinking about the hits he might take. You know, that, that's where you know, obviously, it's done. But you don't think Peyton Manning is sitting around trying to figure out, like, like missing the camaraderie that he loves so much. But if it's not about the money, then, then restructure it. You did notable free agents from the Broncos. Demarius Thomas, Wes Walker, who can retire. Terrence Dagan, the defense, Julius Thomas. I mean, those are some big names that they need to resign as he's not coming back. How do you know those conversations aren't going to happen? Or if he does come back at the figure that he's at, that they can't figure it. They went ahead and they got Demarcus Ware and TJ Ward and uh, Akeem Tlaib last year with Peyton making all that coin. And how'd that work out for them? Well, I mean, it was supposed to work out better, and it didn't. But I'm saying you never know. You never know. You do never know. And uh, pitchers and catchers reporting in baseball in, I believe, eight days? Eight days? And um, uh, the Yankees met with Alex Rodriguez yesterday. And according to the Daily News, he was extremely apologetic, profusely apologetic about how he treated the team last year in the press and going run off the New York to Francesca and basically say he didn't do anything. In person, he died. He ran off. He left. He left the hearing. The that baseball was so holding. Hard. Basically saying, I'm out of order. You're out of order. And then ran off to WFAN and, and basically lied to Francesca's face. All of that. And he's coming back to spring training. And Yankees basically said, all that marketing dollars that he's coming your way from milestones, it's not happening. But, you know, and I'm, I'm, yeah, as, as a Yankee guy, genuinely concerned about the pitching staff, concerned about moving forward in the post-Jeter era. I'm going to miss moments like this, called by John Sterling, the voice of the New York Yankees. And the pitch is live. Sterling calling Derek Jeter's final at bat at Yankee Stadium. Yet another moment that's scripted out of Hollywood that Jeter provided the New York Yankees over the years. The longtime voice of the New York Yankees, John Sterling, joining the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, John? Well, I'm good. It's good to talk to you. I see you all the time. Certainly every Sunday, if not other times when I tune in to NFL. So I haven't been with you in person a long time. We just get together a lot. I'm fine. How you doing? I'm doing well. And, you know, usually that is just uh, something about you just throw out to somebody after you haven't spoken to them in a while. But I also know you went through some personal strife recently uh, with a fire uh, where you lived. Is everything okay with you, John? Well, I'm fine. I mean, I was very lucky that it occurred in the afternoon. If it was at 2 in the morning, I probably did. Um, it's very sobering when um, you leave the building and you only have the clothes on your back. I mean, when you go out to do errands, what do you take with you? Nothing. So everything is gone. But, you know, I'm very lucky that I have the wherewithal to to uh, start to rebuild. And um, I'm in a hotel. And uh, the great thing about it was there were no fatalities among the residents. Mm -hmm. And there were no fatalities among the firefighters. And these brave people came from all over, not just uh, the, the Edgewater area, but all over to risk their lives to put this uh, inferno out. So. Well, I'm, I'm 